How are you all doing? Ralph here again. <coughs> now we're on to part two of the rocker panel repairs on the uh, Chevy Suburban. It's not an in-depth how-to paint video before you get carried away. I'm not going to go right into detail. I'm just going to show you the steps I take to get the finish that I get. Yeah? So if you remember, well if you watched the last one, you'll see we chopped all the rot out, welded uh, replacement steel in, filled it all with body filler to get it nice and smooth and I have now started painting. So we'll go through the steps. Um, I hope you enjoy it as much as you enjoyed the last one. See you in a minute. Here we go then, we're going to use my little DA, my little 3 inch DA, which is going over all the edges and giving it a good once over with a 240 grit. That will smooth everything out and be more than a good enough key for the filler primer that's going to follow. There are a couple of areas right on that door seal that are showing a little bit of corrosion, so we're going to give them some extra attention. Uh, and make sure that we've knocked all of the corrosion back and from there we should be good to go we'll end up finishing it by hand with a red scotch bright just to take the filler primer really well on areas that we've not necessarily needed to sand down so you can see me getting in all the little corners all the nooks and crannies with the red scotch bright yeah, we're smoothing it all out, ready to take paint. And uh, from there we can mix up the paint, get it masked all up, and start laying a bit of primer on. Oh, righto. I'm freezing. Um, going to mix up some two-pack primer now. So this is two-pack eye build primer. And we need four parts of this to one part of hardener. And then we had about 10% thinner, more or less. So it's brand new tin, bear with me. It's probably going to get messy. And I'm struggling to keep it all in shot. So I'm going to move around here a bit. Remember, you get it. Let's just prise this lid off. We'll try and prise this lid off. Oh, Jesus. You put one tight. It's really important that you give this a, a really good stir up because. It's quite thick and it settles at the bottom. So, there we go. It's also important that you don't get it all over yourself because it's nasty stuff, especially the hardener. You need good ventilation and proper respiration. Um, because I'm spraying out in the, the open workshop, I'm just going to stick with a respirator. There's a little spray booth behind me that I do the bike bits in, and smaller parts, uh, in which case I'll wear an air fed mask. It really is that important, honestly. This is like glue, this one. So, look, look how thick that is. So, we're going to give that four parts, and I reckon to do that we need about 150 mil, maybe a little bit more. So I'm going to measure out in my measuring cup. I'm going to measure 200 mil. Fuck it. So we'll go about. About 150-ish. See if there's a four to one. Here we go. It's four to one on this cup. We'll take it up to the first one. Third one, sorry. Just take your time. That's going to level off just about four. There, there we go. So, that's that gloopy shit. I can't get over how thick this is. It's not my usual brand. But they're all as good as each other. Yeah. I don't want to make too much of a mess with it. I'll pop the lid on when I finish recording. To that we add Ardner. Four parts paint, one part Ardner. Luckily these cups are got the marks on them. So we'll just take that up to the there. There we go. 
He's even got a mark on him for the thinners. I'll try and get a shot if I can get this up to the camera. We're going to go 10%, so that's up to the 10% mark. Splash your thinners. I'll show you the cup. There you go. See, look, it's got all the marks on, so you can work out your ratios. Um, I will pop that lid on. Just loose. But knock it on hard when you've finished. I don't want spillages and wastages and all this bit. I'll give it a really, really good mix up. Right, to see. Which is proving a little bit difficult. I'll give it a good whisk up. Get it all nice and even all throughout. Like I said, it's the first time I've used this brand and it's a bit thicker than my usual brand. Um, which really emphasises the importance of what I next want to talk about, which is using the right spray gun. It's, I've got a dedicated primer gun, um, which has got a really large needle and nozzle set up on it. Look how thick that fucking paint is. It's like brush on paint. Normally, I pass all of my paint through a screen. Do a filter, yeah? These little filters, I can't do it with that, it's too fucking thick. So, put the filter to one side and we'll have it in the gun. Not too bothered about getting the last bits out. Just don't want to stand here all day. And what's important about this primer gun, it's got a 2 mil needle and nozzle set up, and you need that for thick paint so that the particles can pass through. So, here we go, that's ready to paint, all mixed up, ready to rock and roll. <coughs> we'll go and give it a go. So we'll give it a good spray and a wipe down with panel wipe. Just get rid of any dirt and grease and any nastiness that's gonna fuck up the primer. Be sure to get right in there right underneath use a nice clean lint free cloth give it a good rub down you'll notice that it's all maxed, masked up even so that we don't get any paint where we don't want it and all we're going to do is spot over the bare steel areas and give everything else a light mist coat we'll leave that about 10 minutes before we prime it proper if you like this will just give us a good key use a little bit more on the bare steel than we are on the painted areas and then we should be good to go with primer proper if you like I did have issues because of the thickness of the paint I ended up thinning it down a little bit more and it's also worth noting that I've got the spray gun wide open. I'm running about 25 to 30 PSI. And I knock the uh, pattern size down a little bit for that first coat, just to spot over the areas that were bare steel. But this is full trigger, full pattern, 25 PSI, and we're gonna build up a few layers. Okay, here we go. So I said five good coats of that filler primer and it's ready to leave for a couple of days to proper harden and then we can knock it back paint it black put it back together there you go right oh so we've got it all primed um we're going to knock that primer back we're going to take i use 500 grit for two pack i'm going to put two pack black on 500 is plenty fine enough, 400 is alright, but I like the 500 finish. Uh, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, I'll just move out of shot a bit. But there was a few little imperfections that the filler primer had obviously not got. So 
what I do, if I can find the shit to show you, is put knife input in. Yeah, just give it a real thin skim. You just take the lid off, squeeze a bit up, get your filler spreader, take it off, and just wipe it into any little pinholes, um, any little voids that you've seen that the filler primer's not got. Because you're not going to rub it down and make them smooth, because there ain't enough paint in it or filler in it or whatever. Little imperfection. It sands down nice and easy. So, what I'm doing, I'm just knocking the top off that stopper, that uh, knife in putter stopper. There's loads of different names for the stuff. There are 500 on the block. Yeah, see how I'm just smoothing it out and following the contours of the panel, just like I did when I did the filler down. I'm just getting that nice and smooth and ready to uh, hit with a DA. So I'm going to do the rest of the panel and my palm sand a lot. Well, the bits that I can get into. With palm sander, and on that I've got 320 grit. Now, I know that sounds a bit counterintuitive, but 320 on the DA is easily as fine as the 500 I uh, was using to start with, and it is well fine enough to take the two pack black that we're going to put on top of it. And now I'm just finishing off back with the 500. I've done away with the block. Uh, I'm just using it by hand just to get in the corners and the nooks and crannies and up to the edges and uh, get it all sorted, ready for paint and I'll give it a right good blow off to get rid of the dust when I've done before we uh, mix up the paint. Right, oh, it's paint time. Uh, much the same as the filler primer that we mixed. Let me just grab some gloves. Sorry about it. <laughs> Nasty shit. We don't want it on our skin. Especially the odd one. Um, much the same procedure as mixing the filler primer, only this is two to one. Two parts paint, one part hardener. 10% thin is thereabouts. So, it's awkward to film to be fair. I'm not entirely over the moon with my setup here, but give it a good old stir. Always stir your paints well. That way you know the colour's going to be uniform and everything's going to flow right. I'm going to guesstimate at about 150 millilitres plus additive. So there's a mark on my measuring cup for two to one. So we're going to go up to there. Yep. To that we're going to add 50% hardener, give us, oh look at that's fucked up that tin, it's bad empty, to give us a 2 to 1, which is going to take us to there, dribble dribble everywhere, horrible shit, and then a 10% thinners, which is just a splash. Uh, a little bit more. There we go. So, easy peasy. Squeeze in the lemons, please. Give it a really good stir up. Real good mix up. You can see when you pull your rule out, how it's laying and how it's running down the rule. With a little bit of experience. You soon learn whether it's thin enough, whether it's mixed enough. I think that's a little bit thick, but we'll go with it. As it is. Now we are going to strain this off. We've got a strainer on the stand. We've got a colour gun underneath, which unlike the primer gun, has got a 1.4 millimetre Tip and needle, general purpose that is, that'll pretty much do everything apart from thick filler primer, like we were using. So that goes in the gun, gets strained through. Pop the cap on, tidy up, and we'll be good to go. Okay, so we're giving it a good spray down with the panel wipe. You're just catching me finish off now. 
just to make sure that there's no uh, grease or dirt or contaminants or similar on the panel from all that work that we've put into it. Next up we're going to use the tack rag just to get rid of any fluffy bits, any uh, dust and dirt that's settled, anything that we've missed. I'm just blowing it off with a air only coming out of the spray gun and that's at my spraying pressure which is about 25 psi 25 to 30 psi again make sure you're getting all the nooks and crannies make sure that uh, you've covered it all over always store your tap rag back in the bag that it comes in it'll last for ages honestly they've got so many sides that uh, they last a job after job after job now we're just going to give it just like with the filler primer just going to give it a nice light stipply coat like a, a bond coat if you don't knock the tripod too many times doing it so we're not looking for a thick even coverage we're just looking for a start that the rest of the layers of the paint will adhere to and that paint will bite into the primer ready for us to carry on so there we go it's time for the second coat just like with the filler primer we're building it up nice and steady making sure we're getting all the nooks and crannies look a little bit awkward and tight to get up there but we'll gently put some in take your time build it up it's absolutely no rush just get a nice even cover so here we go that's now had three good coats of black it's tacked off a little bit of dust fell on it where i pulled the uh, masking off but you can see it's all super smooth and shiny i just need to polish this back corner up a little bit just to pull it in, you can see my reflection not in the existing. How are you doing? Um, just to pull it into the new. Not a problem. We'll get it all trimmed up. And it should be ready to go. So we've got it trimmed back up. All repairs are done. There's me again. Got the other side to do, mind you. But you can see where I've been. No more nasty rot. Everything's back in place. Should be great for another 20 years. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and bear in mind, this is just how I do it, you know. Everyone's got their own little uh, bits and bobs and ways of doing things, but I'm sure you'll agree that it certainly is a vast improvement on the rock that were there before. Have a great one, and big love to you and yours.